Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, AMD's Caspian event has just finished. I've watched the entire broadcast, and I wanted to share with you my thoughts and opinions of the event, despite the fact that it's insanely late here in the UK as I'm recording this video. But, with all of that said, let's get into it, because as I said, there's been a lot of announcements and a lot of information that's popped up, and a lot of it's really insane. So, first of all, I guess performance and the AMD roadmap are definitely what most people are going to want to discuss. However, later on we do have a very small preview of AMD's Polaris architecture. We will also have a greater breakdown in the next day or so as a GDC continues to roll around and we get more information, but these are once again my initial opinions. So the main thing AMD have focused on is performance, particularly in the mainstream sector, uh, versus the high end. They basically said that it's not tracked. The amount of money that you've spent on a GPU is not keeping up with how Moore's Law has been going, which is a fairly good point. To this end, AMD are um, working on a new roadmap, and it's very different to what we initially thought. The GPU architecture roadmap, obviously now we're on 28nm GPUs, which is currently what they're considering the baseline of uh, one times per slash watt. Then we're moving to Polaris, which is two times performance per watt. Then finally Vega, uh, which is uh, HBM2, and then Navi, which is scalability next generation memory. Now, I want to first of all speak with Navi because scalability is what they're really pushing with Navi. But the really weird thing is the next gen memory because you can take that a multitude of different ways. How I choose to take it is a probable follow up for HBM2 because let's face it, HBM2 in terms of the power, the amount of bandwidth it's going to produce um, versus the amount of power it's going to be sucking down and the amount of memory that you can actually stack on the die there's a limit to it. So most likely we're going to see a HBM3 or it could be something completely different, we just don't know. Both AMD and Nvidia are really pushing that. Vega, however, it would appear, is going to be the GPU which HBM2 is going to debut with, which is completely contrary to what we've been reporting, including myself, for all of these months. Now, it would appear that Polaris is going to be focusing on performance per watt, and presumably it will have combinations of HBM1, and GDDR5 and GDDR5X. X, remember, has roughly twice the performance per pin as typical vanilla 5. It has 7 gigabyte, uh, 7, 7 GBPS with just uh, GDDR5, and 5X has 14 GBPS, which is obviously considerably higher. Now, unfortunately, we don't know too much about Polaris at the moment. There was just a very short demo that was shown on screen where it was announced that Hitman, of course a DX12 title, is running at 1440p and was, and I quote, at the highest settings and at silky smooth 60fps or above. Presumably the reason behind the delay with HPM2 is just because of the difficulty in production and it does track with the problems that NVIDIA are having. Obviously, we're going to have to wait for a formal announcement on the specifications of Polaris before we completely and utterly condemn it. It's possible that the initial Polaris GPUs, the ones that are going to be releasing, let's say, the first half of this year, or the, you know, let's say, early Q3, are going to have, let's say, HBM2, um, HBM1 and potentially GDDR5X, and then on the fourth quarter of this year, we might see the introduction of a very super duper high end, the equivalent of the Furies, which would have HBM2. We just don't really know. And supposedly, the rumors have it that Nvidia are going to be doing much the same thing. But once again, I don't want to report on something that you know is a potential. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Now, this means that Vega is going to arrive in 2017. And we're presuming it's going to be this weird amalgamation of Fire Pro potentially. And I say that because AMD have made a massive big deal out of the Radeon Pro Duo. And we'll go into that in just a moment. But suffice to say, a lot was made of the GPU. 
um, and a lot was made of the potential of asynchronous compute, a lot was made of the potential of being able to develop for it. There are actually colleges now, they're working on this with Crytek, they're going to be setting up VR colleges where you can actually bug AMD or Crytek themselves to basically say, hey, how do we produce stuff? And even, they had the dudes over from Fox on the stage talking about how, you know, they were creating interactive movies and all of this stuff and it's obvious that this is kind of the direction they're going for uh, it's it's just kind of crazy at least in my opinion next up i do want to speak just briefly about solon q which is a i guess you could say a wireless hd um or should i say headset which is virtual reality it essentially augments the reality that you're well standing in so the demo they gave is the magic beans which essentially just turned this office into a crazy jack and the beanstalk esque surreal virtual world now we're assured that all of this was done via the headset in real time it basically uses cameras to track the environment and then after that it will augment that re environment with just crazy imagery now i'm actually fairly impressed with the level of detail considering that this is a wireless headset set it's headset excuse me you can tell i'm bloody tired um wireless headset has not got you know being connected up to a playstation 4 it's not being connected to a high spec pc it's just being um, powered if memory serves by an r7 graphics chip and an amd fx processor it's essentially an apu and is essentially also being used uh, utilizing amd's liquid vr technology now it's going to be really obvious that as time progresses and we see more powerful headsets this stuff is going to be looking even more impressive and as a proof of concept, I have to say this headset is really awesome looking. I imagine in certain applications, this could be really cool. Um, just imagine you could have anything from bloody, uh, you know, Google Maps in the corner of your, you know, of your vision, all the way to being able to create something like Resident Evil experiences. I mean, imagine handing this out and then putting someone in like a like an abandoned town like Silent Hill you could make some really freaking awesome horror experiences or like a mansion bloody well recreating the umbrella um, you know umbrella outbreak or something like that it'd just be amazing and obviously once again really early the graphics are not perfect there are still some problems with it without a question but it is really awesome in terms of proof of concept now the final thing that I do want to go into is 16 teflops of computer performance also known as the radeon pro duo so we actually saw the damn thing there was images of it and there was a couple of demos of it and i have to say it looks pretty impressive essentially it's being touted as a work and play card the idea here is that you're going to be able to do anything from running 3ds max along with let's say virtual reality all the way down to pushing high frame rates in your favorite games and basically the specifications are pretty much what have leaked before uh, to Fiji cores obviously it's slightly down clocked around the 730 megahertz is roughly the guesstimate uh, 8 gigabytes of HBM memory and well you can see the power connection requirements yourself it looks kind of cool and honestly speaking it's a preview I think of where we're going in the gaming industry and it was really obvious throughout AMD's event a couple of things. One, they've got a lot of support in the virtual reality side, but also the fact that <clears throat> I think even I was somewhat astounded with how industries are starting to merge. And this is something I'm definitely going to speak more about tomorrow when I can actually think coherently. As I said, really late here. It's approaching about 2 a.m. And considering I'm just getting over the flu, that's pretty impressive. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the the amalgamation of industries, and by which I mean like the, the entertainment industry, the gaming industry, the, the film, it's like now a lot of filmmakers are using game engines to be able to create or pan out their their shots for example in a film 
for proof of concept or use virtual reality on sets and it's just this is where we're going um, and we need a hell of a lot more computing power roughly it's being estimated by Raja Kodori that we need around one million no I'm not shitting you around a million times more performance than the highest end GPUs right now can provide to simulate virtual reality of the real world quality by which I mean we would need to quite literally have one million Radeon Fury X's for the sake of argument plug those into a massive ass motherboard power them with basically a nuclear power station and then you would be able to simulate a reasonable facsimile of real life being able to walk down your neighborhood and potentially you would not be able to tell the difference and this requires a lot of work this would require you know scanning of objects this would require incredible texture resolutions this requires an, a massive just a, a crazy amount of work from developers it cre and I don't just mean developers as in you know Crytek or you know Ubisoft it's the middleware developers it's the people who are putting together DirectX 12 it's the folks who are creating the audio effects it's the folks who are working on just little tiny things that are improving the quality and realism of just maybe even the dust and particle systems or the quality and the realism of artificial intelligence or how light f functions and it's it's slow going anyway um, I just wanted to lead with this kind of my initial thoughts of the event I'm pretty damn impressed I really wanted them to show more Polaris stuff um, I was a bit disappointed to be honest that they didn't show more and it was obvious that they were kind of holding it back which I think pissed a lot of people off in stream and I think it made some people disappointed but I'm unsurprised they didn't show some stuff off I you know they always touted it as it was going to be a preview not we are going to remain um, you know completely open with you all and basically bear the GPU up and we're going to tell you how many shaders it's got and the amount of clock speed it's running and you know how many of our engineers work sit past six o'clock every evening to get it to this stage no it was obvious that they're still working on the stuff and you know we could still see more over the next couple of weeks but I think it was a pretty good event um, and there's definitely a lot of stuff to an analyze here and for me personally I think it was quite a learning event it was a good learning event and by which I mean I didn't necessarily learn stuff in terms of like well I know what a pixel is um, or you know I know what an asynchronous compute engine is which you know those were questions that were kind of routinely asked of the audience just to kind of say hey um, this gives us a talking point or you know we need to bring this up instead it was more of a um, how can I put it in the best possible way it was it, it kind of opened up my eyes a little bit more to the wider world of, uh, of gaming and I'll be honest um, I, I think for virtual reality I've had kind of a very narrow focus of just like it's for playing horror games and now I'm starting to realize a lot more that the practical applications for this are really kind of cool and are really kind of immersive but I'm gonna get going I'll probably sound a hell of a lot more coherent tomorrow um, but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it somewhat informative <sighs> hopefully so considering but anyway I'm going to go because I have to export this video and upload it and, you know, do everything to it. So I'm going to cry internally. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Uh, if you can like, subscribe, you know, share, definitely that would be very appreciated. But for now, take care, guys. Hopefully you've had a really good day. Bye.